My name is Alex Collison, and I'm a professor of psychiatry and pediatrics and a child psychiatrist, and I'm the clinical director of the Seaver Autism Center for Research and Treatment at Mount Sinai. Because we've all forgotten our high school biology, I thought I'd give you a genetics primer. So your body's genome is the complete set of DNA with approximately three billion nucleotides packed into every cell. Nucleotides are the units that form DNA and serve as the building blocks of protein. Your DNA is then packaged into 23 chromosomes, one inherited from mom and one inherited from dad, and codes for approximately 20,000 genes. DNA is first transcribed to RNA and then translated into proteins. And proteins play a critical role in regulating all the body's functions, including the brain. So the reason to repeat genetic testing, even if your child has previously had genetic testing, is just as improved phones and TVs have really changed our lives, Recent advances in technology have vastly improved our ability to discover new genes that cause autism. Beginning in the early 2000s, cytogenetic arrays, also called chromosomal microarrays, were developed and attached hundreds of thousands of probes all across the genome to detect structural variations, also called copy number variants. Beginning in 2008 and updated again in 2013, the American College of Medical Genetics recommended chromosomal microarrays for all children suspected of having an autism spectrum disorder. Fragile X syndrome testing is also recommended. Using these tests, we can now identify genetic causes in at least 10% of children with autism spectrum disorder. More recently, whole exome sequencing has become readily available and allows us to detect even smaller changes in the DNA. Whole exome sequencing is a higher resolution technique that examines all the protein coding sections of the DNA down to a single nucleotide. Between chromosomal microarrays and whole exome sequencing, Approximately 190 genes have been identified which are causally related to autism, and it's estimated that approximately 1,000 genes will eventually be discovered to play a causal role. Soon, whole genome sequencing will be routine and include all the genome, not just the coding sections. There are two main types of genetic defects that have been identified in autism spectrum disorder. The first type, as mentioned, are large structural changes in the DNA called copy number variants, or CNVs. With CNVs, thousands or even millions of nucleotides are affected. CNVs can be deletions of genetic material, duplications of material, translocations where one piece of the chromosome gets cut off and added to another chromosome, or inversions where genetic material gets flipped within a chromosome. CNVs interfere with the process where proteins are made and typically cause loss of protein function. The second main type of genetic defect in autism are small mutations affecting only one or a few nucleotides. These are also called point mutations. These types of point mutations are only identified by high-resolution techniques like whole exome sequencing or specific sequencing panels that include the gene of interest. The deletion, insertion, or substitution of a nucleotide can interfere with the reading frame of the DNA and also result in loss of function of the gene product or the protein. To date, all the genetic defects reliably identified to cause autism are rare variants, each accounting for only about 1% of autism or less. However, when these rare genetic defects are present, they're always associated with clinical symptoms, which more often than not include autism. On the other hand, common variations in the genetic code may increase the risk for autism, likely acting together with other common variants. But any single common variant in and of itself is not going to cause autism. So far, these common variants have been very challenging to identify because they are common and, when present, only associated with weak effects. Research is really important because very, very large samples are required in order to identify new rare and common variants associated with autism. So I hope you've found this primer on the advances in the genetics of autism useful. For more information, please tune in to www.sieverautismcenter.org.